So today when a user goes in and they actually download uh, the BRD wallet, like what is the functionality that's in there and what can they, what do they do? Yep, absolutely. That's the, exactly the right way to think about it. Like what are the practical use cases? So it's always been known for simplicity um, and security. And, you know, it's an implementation of Bitcoin in, in a more pure sense. So it, it comes with all the other benefits of Bitcoin. It's really an on-ramp. It's the easiest way to get started. So when you launch the app, it's it, what I really, the reason why we grew really fast, um, and the reason why I think by guys like Roger Ver, who invested in blockchain.info, but probably is the individual responsible for the single most installs of BRD on, on customer devices. The reason is because uh, there's no onboarding, right? It's not like going to a bank or, you know, an exchange and creating an account. You literally download the app, you hit new wallet, boom, you can start sending and receiving crypto, right? So I could just send you, scan your QR code, send you some Bitcoin right now. That's a really great way when you meet someone in a restaurant or a family member at dinner or in a bar and you they say, where do you work? I work in crypto. I've heard about that. What is that? We download, you know, an exchange app. The guy's there for 30 minutes taking selfies, trying to establish an account. That's not a great crypto experience, right? That's not what Bitcoin's supposed to be. That's a fake account, right? You download the VRD app, boom, within five seconds, you know, I can send you some Bitcoin. Oh, that's how it works. Great. That's pretty cool, right? So the onboarding gets them in. It makes it easy. And ultimately, what you can do is you can um, buy and sell crypto and you can trade. And it's really targeted more at the, like I said, Robin Hood sort of audience, casual investor, not the high frequency, you know, traders doing day trading who are sitting on exchanges constantly, right? But that's the trade-off that you get is we focus on the UX. Uh, we want to help, you know, sort of the, uh, the average individual global citizen get onto the uh, crypto bandwagon. And, um, you know, that's the sort of the, 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 the role we play. It's kind of like your Robin Hood customer versus like your Charles Schwab customer. For sure. And then um, you, you guys also have come out with uh, Blockset by BRD, uh, which is even an advertiser here on, uh, on the podcast. And uh, maybe talk a little bit about kind of what the uh, idea or the genesis was for, uh, for that body of work and then kind of what you guys have built so far. Okay, sure. Thanks, Bob. So uh, we, we worked really hard to build a, a brand around BRD. And I, I think a big reason that the crypto folks are really on uh, really helped accelerate the growth of the company and the app is because they trusted us as open source, right? So there's no funny business with, you know, all your money's going to disappear someday. And we've never had any money hacked from, from any BRD app, actually, right? Because it's decentralized. There's like no honey pot, right? And so we, we took that brand, that trust, and that sort of, you know, technology, right? And it actually, it happened as a result, uh, to be honest with you, of our relationship with SBI. So remember I said that I started to really get into the Japanese sort of relationships and, and business. Well, when we created BRD, I came back to Japan and we actually raised a lot of money from here. And then later in the company's evolution, um, SVI contacted us and they said, hey, we'd really like to include the BRD consumer app in our new crypto banking flow. By the way, we'd like to invest some money in your company. And at the time, we weren't even raising money. We, we told them <laughs> that we weren't so interested. But uh, eventually, um, we ended up you know, taking the strategic investment from them. And as part of that investment, we sat down with their technology teams. They've got some really smart people found here in Tokyo. And, and what they said was, well, OK, now we understand how your architecture works. You ought to take the back end of your consumer app, OK, which is you know, sort of like the, the server side, right? Talks to all the different blockchains. And maybe we could use that too. And so our, our CTO and, and, and I and the management team sat down and we thought, you know what, there's a really big opportunity here. So we took the back end of the consumer app, talks to all the different blockchains, we productized it, we turned that into Blockset, a set of building blocks to basically help companies uh, build um, software for blockchain access quicker, right, and at lower cost, and don't have to run nodes, lower infrastructure costs, and I think really importantly, it's out there in production with 4 million customers for the BRD app, so you can trust it, right? Plus the core of it's open source as well. So we productized it with help from SVI. SVI became our first customer of Blockset. They launched in production with it a few weeks ago, actually, for their crypto banking platform. And uh, now it's uh, a product that we're selling in our enterprise sort of um, division of the company. And we're having great success just in the last few months since it launched. Um, and, you know, we appreciate all the folks out there helping us with that, um, getting the word out like you are. 
And um, we've got major accounting firms now signed. We're working with um, big cross-border payment companies. I, I can't really say the names, but they're like big companies that you would know. And you know, it's, it's just about them looking at this. It's like the early days of say like cloud um, you know, hosting. Like AWS and Azure got started. And initially it's like, well, we do all that in house. And they're like, well, wait a minute, build versus buy. It's a lot cheaper to do it that way. I can trust that one a lot more and I can actually grow my business faster, but I need a solution that is really scalable. Not just this little, you know, sort of API to access a few blockchains that works once in a while. I need something that can scale to the size of, you know, a uh, Fortune 100 company's needs. That's what Blockset is. That's what we do. And so it's it's like an infrastructure, you know, APIs to access the blockchains, infrastructure for like next generation banking. Got it. And so is the whole idea there that um, similar to how AWS provides really that infrastructure layer, people can tap into it and, and kind of do all these things cheaper, faster, uh, more scalably. You guys are doing that and not only helping them build their products, but also then giving them access to the various blockchains as well. Right, that's right. So it's it's not so AWS is more like you know hosting compute resources, right? And so when you're when you want to build blockchain apps, right? Certainly, one of the big issues is like running your own say Bitcoin node or Ripple node or Ethereum node. Actually, that costs a lot of money. But just running nodes, that's just one piece of of value that we add, right? The real value, I think, is we have one API. Okay, that means there's one set of functions to call by the develop by an engineer to access any blockchain. That actually is pretty powerful because today, if I'm sitting at a bank and I want to offer, say, crypto bank accounts to my customers, I've got to write code to talk to Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, you know, all these other blockchains. And there's forks and there's all these changes and there's bugs. And man, it's a lot of work. Not to mention that I got to have a, a legion of, of engineers who understand the nuances of each blockchain. What Blockset does is it puts a layer on top of all those individual blockchains whether they're private or public. And it basically, um, my, it, it takes all the data from them, has this sort of metadata layer because we can analyze the blockchain data as well. And then there's one API on the top. So your engineers only have to code to one step. And as we add more blockchains in, in the um, block set sort of, you know, SaaS environment, then those blockchains just immediately become available, you know, to, to, the, to our customer who's building blockchain software with Blockset, and they don't have to do any real incremental coding or anything, right? Plus, we handle all the infrastructure issues from running the servers to the ports to the maintenance, um, you know, and all those things as well. And then we've got partners that, that do things like AML and transaction checking, right? And custody as well. So you could build, you know, custodial banking apps with, with Blockset, like SVI group, right? And, you could just, you know, myriad sort of applications. You want to add virtual uh, cryptocurrency or virtual currency to a, a video game. You know, you could you could do it with Blockset as well. So kind of anything in that space.